Some days an airline pilot can earn his entire net worth in one short day covering one major emergency. Other airline pilots may go through an entire 20 year plus career and never have one single engine failure, actual engine failure. They will practice it many times in the simulator. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. I'm a first officer on the Boeing 777 for a major airline and by popular request have been asked to discuss a little bit about the Southwest Airlines flight 1380 engine failure incident yesterday, April 17th. Here's the facts as we know them right now. Southwest Airlines flight 1380 departed New York's LaGuardia Airport en route for Dallas Love Field yesterday morning, April 17th. And 20, mi 20 minutes or so into the flight while climbing through about 32,000, 32,500 feet, the left engine, the number one engine, engines are counted left to right, failed. That was about 11.15 in the morning. The aircraft involved is a 737-700, and of course that aircraft is powered by the CFM-56 series engines, the CFM-56-7 Bravo series of engines. They've already released the captain's name, Captain Tammy Jo Schultz, and her crew safely diverted into Philadelphia Airport. There were 144 passengers on board, five crew members, one fatality and seven injuries. Pilots are trained constantly to handle emergency situations. We go back into the simulator every nine months and practice, practice, practice one emergency after another. But generally when we practice the, these emergencies, we tend to do them one at a time. But we do them in real time and it's in an extremely realistic training environment. The situation that this Southwest flight faced yesterday was what we call a compound emergency. They are suffering from two emergencies at the same time, potentially maybe three. The catastrophic engine failure followed by a rapid depressurization gets you into two checklists almost simultaneously. This is where you got to rely on the experience of the crew to do the correct checklist at the correct time to resolve the situation correctly. One additional possible emergency they may be dealing with is a loss of hydraulic pressure of one or more hydraulic systems. So today what I want to do is do a quick review of turbojet engine basics. I've got some great animation from CFM itself on the particular engine in question. And we'll also look at the difference between uncontained and contained engine failures. Once we have a basic working knowledge of how these jet engines operate in a way that we can all understand, we'll then look at a few issues that the NTSB investigators will be looking at for this incident. And then perhaps at a later time we'll do a separate video discussing how pilots actually deal with these emergencies, what the procedures are for an engine failure and a rapid depressurization. And in the process, demystify and remove some of this mainstream media hysteria about these situations when they occur. Despite all the hysteria you may be seeing on the news, I want to reiterate the safety of our airline aviation culture here in the United States. This is the first airline fatality in the United States since 2009. This is only the second fatality that Southwest Airlines has ever suffered. Meanwhile, here in the United States, we suffer over 35 to nearly 40,000 fatalities in cars every year. We'll also discuss the similarity between this engine failure and an engine failure on Southwest Flight 3472 on August 27th, 2016 look at a proposed airworthiness directive that was a result of that incident in 2016. We'll talk about the role of the NTSB, the National Transportation Safety Board, and the role of the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, during one of these investigations. Now let's get the classic Air Force explanation of how a turbojet engine works, and then we'll look at some great animation from CFM about how the CFM-56 engine works. By the way, Captain Tammy Jo Schultz is a former F-18 pilot, one of the first women's to ever fly F-18s in the Navy. Right there. Am I supposed to say stuff? And here to discuss the Brayton Air Cycle is Lieutenant Pete Brown from the Army Air Corps. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. That's all you need to know about the modern turbojet engine. 
Now let's check out some animation from CFM to see how this actually works. How a CFM 56-7B turbofan engine works. To make an aircraft move forwards, we need a pushing force or thrust, which we create by making the air accelerate between the front and the back of the engine. This is basically done by the large fan at the front of the engine, through which air passes at a high rate. These are the various components of the CFM 56-7B. The fan, which is a large diameter propeller. The low and high pressure compressors with 12 stages, which step by step increase the pressure of the air as it flows through them. The combustion chamber, in which jet fuel is mixed with air and burned. The high and low pressure turbines, in which the pressure of the hot gas is reduced as they drive the compressors and fan. There are five turbine stages, one high pressure and four low pressure. And finally, the exhaust assembly. The CFM 56-7B is a high bypass ratio engine. The primary flow passes through the combustor, while the secondary flow passes only through the fan. 80% of the engine airflow, accelerated by the fan, is directed into the bypass duct and provides 80% of the engine's thrust. The primary flow passes in succession through the compressors, the combustor, and the turbines before being ejected rearwards through the exhaust assembly. The air is compressed in the low and high pressure compressors and its temperature can reach 450 degrees Celsius, after which it enters the combustor, where fuel is injected and ignited. Burning the mixture of fuel and air brings the temperature up to 1700 degrees Celsius. Finally, the accumulated energy is extracted in the five turbine stages immediately after the combustion section. The pressure of the air drops as it passes through the turbines and makes them spin. And the turbines, whose shafts ride within one another concentrically, in turn drive the fan and the two compressors. The air is then expelled through the primary duct, joining the air from the fan stream. A turbofan is therefore a flow cycle engine. Air is compressed, then heated by burning fuel, after which it passes through the turbines which drive the compressors and the fan. Now let's take a closer look at the high bypass turbofan section of the CFM engine as these fan blades are the component that's in question in these two engine failures. There's a total of 24 fan blades in each of these CFM engines. CFM is a joint venture between GE General Electric here in the United States and Safran Aircraft Engines in France. These engines are commonly used in the Boeing 737 and the Airbus A320 aircraft. Over 30,700 of these engines have been produced and depending on which model you get, these engines can produce between 19,000 and 34,000 pounds of thrust. As you look at these fan blades, take note of the dovetail design where the fan blade slides into the hub. Now that we have a basic understanding of how these high bypass turbofan engines work, Let's look at what happens when a blade fails in the fan section and how the engine is designed to contain that failure. In this test, a small explosive charge is used to release a fan blade from the disc. The engine has to contain the fan blade safely and also has to contend successfully with the resulting out of balance forces.
A released fan blade contains enough energy to throw a medium-sized car some hundred feet into the air. In a full engine test, this energy is absorbed as vibration through the engine carcass, truly one of the most impressive sights in aero engine testing. So what's going on with these two Southwest Airline engine failures that look so similar? Are they uncontained engine failures? Well, technically, no. Both of these engine failures have already been attributed to a single fan blade failure failing right at the root of the fan blade, just above the dovetail socket. In yesterday's incident, investigators are already claiming that the fan blade remained contained, the failed fan blade remained contained within the engine. What didn't remain contained was the entire inlet section to the engine. Due to the vibration of the sudden failure, the entire inlet section of that engine basically blew apart. And it's believed that shrapnel from that intake section and the cowling is what busted the window that caused the rapid depressurization. Let's go take a look at some of the pictures. This first picture is a side-by-side -side comparison of these two different engine failures. On the left is yesterday's engine failure, flight number 1380. The white material is foam left over from the fire trucks. And on the right is Southwest flight 3472, the August 2016 incident. This is another view of the 2016 incident showing the front of the engine still intact looking at the fan blades and the entire inlet section gone. Here's investigators looking at yesterday's engine failure, flight 1380. And in this picture, circled in red, you can see the missing fan blade. Note also the deformation of the fan blade next to the missing fan blade. As a result of the first fan blade failure from the 2016 incident, a temporary AD or airworthiness directive was proposed by the FAA and it proposed an ultrasonic inspection of certain fan blades on certain aircraft that have reached a certain number of cycles or time in service. What is an AD, an airworthiness directive? It's an inspection required by the FAA that if not complied with, renders the entire aircraft unairworthy. What's the role of the NTSB in all of this? The NTSB does not make regulations. It does not make airworthiness directives. It can make only recommendations to the FAA to further improve safety based on their findings from their investigations out in the field and in the lab. So where does that leave us? Well, Southwest Airlines is being proactive and already accelerating the inspection of their fan blade sections on their aircraft. How rare are these kind of occurrences? Well, the NTSB has reported recently that as far as uncontained engine failures go, they only see about three per year, and that includes outside of the United States. 
a very rare occurrence. So I hope this gave you a little better understanding of the Southwest Airlines Flight 1380 engine failure. In 19 years of commercial airline flying, I've only had one engine failure. It's a very rare occurrence. And maybe in a future video, we can talk about pilot procedures for dealings for, with such emergencies. See you here.